First on the agenda is the proclamation recognizing the Jersey Devil Festival of April 6th and 7th, 2018. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. You gonna come up? <laughs> I don't know. I would take a picture. All right. Do we have to move for this? Oh, you'll have yours. I don't think so. Bump into things if we try to go over there. Huh? Or bump into things if we try to go over there. I can crawl. Oh, okay. Asbury Park is universally acknowledged as a place of supernaturally talented artists, artisans, craftsmen, musicians, and tall tale tellers. And whereas the Jersey Devil is the first and oldest cryptid or monster in the United States of America, having been reported by the Lenape <laughs> and colonists alike, and whereas sharing our cultural legends and myths help build our community and bind us to each other through generations, and whereas the Jersey Devil though mysterious, have never been known to cause more than good scare. And whereas the Jersey Devil Festival is a day of celebrating heritage, history, folklore, and good yarn while introducing people to our fair city, its business, and its parks. And the Jersey Devil celebrated in the Jersey Devil Festival of Esbury Park, a free event upon a free event open to any and all who choose to participate in and at the level they choose, including lectures, walking tours, art contests, and many other events. Esbury Park is a city that values community and possesses devilish spirits of good old-fashioned fun. The Jersey Devil Festival invites people to discover folklore and history while also showcasing the art, restaurant, business community of Esbury Park. The Jersey Devil and the Jersey Devil Festival share Esbury Park's indomitable spirit and drive to survive, grow, and build. Therefore, be it resolved that John Moore, Mayor of Esbury Park, do hereby proclaim the Jersey Devil as the official cryptid of Esbury Park and encourage residents to learn more about the folklore and history of the uniquely New Jersey creature. And we should do, just do a picture with everybody. One yeah. picture with everybody. And then we're good to go. There we go. My wife didn't know the Jersey okay. Devil was. She said, what happens in your meeting? Like tonight we have a proclamation for the Jersey Devil. What the do. fuck is that? <laughs> Next on the agenda is city manager's report on issues raised at prior council meetings. Not at this time, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. right, and we'll move to special events. Leisha. Excuse me. <laughs> Good evening, Mary Council. This evening there are three applications before you. The first one is from the Quality of Life Committee uh, to do a free cycling event in conjunction with the Earth Day Fair on April 21st. Second is the citywide yard sale to benefit Rescue Ridge on June 9th. And third is Bourbon, Bacon, and Blues uh, to be held in Kennedy Park, sponsored by Cross and Orange on April 22nd. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to presentations. The first one is a presentation of a Jersey Shore Medical Center. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Tim Foley. I'm the Vice President for uh, Physician and Business Development at Jersey Shore University Medical Center. I'd like to thank the Council for your time this evening to present to you uh, our what we call our Hope Tower project. Um, uh, just a little bit about Jersey Shore. It's a, uh, a 614 bed facility. Uh, we have a, a medical staff of uh, 1,200, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1,200 physicians and over uh, 3,700 uh, team members, employees who work there. We are the region's only level two trauma center. 
um, uh, where the region is leading cardiac surgery provider and home to the Cahove Indian Children's Hospital, which was the first children's hospital in Monmouth in Ocean Counties. Uh, we have a 24-7 pediatric emergency department and we are uh, ranked uh, by U.S. News and World Report as number four in New, New Jersey and number 11 in the New York metro area. Uh, and, and more recently, we're very <laughs> pleased to announce that uh, we uh, uh, recently launched the Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine at Seton Hall University in, in Nutley. Um, and we just uh, received in the past uh, week uh, over 1,400 applications uh, uh, from students, prospective students, uh, who will start uh, this summer at the medical school. So thank you for that uh, time to do that little introduction. And now I'm here to talk about our, what we call our Hope Tower Project. Hope, um, and the Hope Tower stands for a healing outpatient experience. And it's the, uh, the building that you see there. There's an aerial view as well as uh, uh, an artist rendition of, of, of the building. Um, it's designed for patient-centered care and it's gonna meet our growing healthcare needs of the community and allow patients to access uh, excellent care close to home. It's a 260 $5 million dollar investment uh, by Hackensack Meridian Health. Uh, the tower is just under uh, 300,000 square feet and 10 stories. Uh, we broke ground in November of 2015. Uh, the parking garage, uh, which is, so you can see in the aerial view, located right behind the tower, is uh, opened in January of 2017. And we ex expect the tower to open in the spring, this spring, in, in a phased approach. So we're gonna be opening it floor by floor. Uh, and we view this building as uh, the cornerstone of our vision and commitment to providing care for uh, the residents and, and the community. Um, just a couple quick features about this 10-story uh, building. Um, the, one of the primary focuses and features of the building is on the first two floors um, is, a, uh, is our new cancer center. It will feature 33 and infusion therapy uh, chairs, and that's the, uh, the second to the last uh, uh, drawing. There is the a rendition of inside the um, uh, the, the, the infusion suite. So it's a it's uh, right now we have a, a 12 chair infusion suite on the hospital campus. This is a, a 33 chairs. It's very spacious. A lot of lights. A lot of windows for pan, uh, for cancer patients. We also have, two, uh, we'll be installing in our cancer center two, two what are called true beam linear, linear accelerators for those receiving radiation therapy for their cancer. These are the latest uh, linear accelerators for that type of cancer treatment. There will also be a women's center, uh, cardio oncology services, nurse navigators, and other support for, for, for patients with cancer. Uh, also on the first two stories will be uh, our, our outpatient imaging services. We're going to move our radiology services out uh, of its current location and into this, into the, uh, the, the two floors uh, of this building just to make it convenient for, for patients. Uh, we'll also have pre-registration and lab services. And then on the, the remaining floors moving up, um, e uh, each of our clinical departments will have uh, uh, its own floor, internal medicine, psychiatry, OBGYN, surgery, um, so on and so forth. Um, and then on the uh, on the top two floors uh, is uh, dedicated to academics and research. Um, on the uh, on the last uh, uh, picture there is the uh, a new uh, a teaching theater um, auditorium uh, on the top floor. There's a ton of teaching happening at Jersey Shore, both uh, uh, medical students, medical residents, nurses, uh, allied health profession uh, professionals, uh, lab uh, professionals. We have uh, uh, medical explorers from local high schools. And uh, we just needed more more space for all that teaching. So this is a state of art uh, teaching uh, facility. And then on the um, on the ninth <coughs> floor is a, a a simulation center that we'll use also f for f for that teaching. Um, there is a uh, a replica um, OR uh, patient care room, exam room. So it's a great place for caregivers to to simulate how they're providing care to, to patients and how to coordinate their care amongst the, amongst the different specialties. Um, and then the, the, we're also relocating our, our research uh, center there as well. So lots of clinical trials and research is going on in the building. So uh, I appreciate your time. I didn't, just wanted to introduce the, the, the building that's opening up this spring and just highlight some of the features. And on behalf of uh, all the team members and physicians at Jersey Shore, uh, uh, thank you for your support and, uh, and the opportunity to uh, show this to you. We, we thank you and if possible, 
when you open up, if you could arrange a tour for us, that would oh, be great. We would love to do that. Thank you. For yeah. And uh, congratulations on opening up the medical school. Thank you. I think what, the first one in 50 years to open it in Jersey? I believe so, yes. Right. Yeah. And I saw the applications are through the roof and uh, going to be very tough to get in and some great people I know people applying and the, okay. their credentials are fantastic so it's going to be tough to select so good luck on that one that's very exciting uh, we definitely need more physicians in, in the state yes of so but uh, again we thank you for everything I mean I remember when it was Ficton Hospital so I mean I still call it Ficton at the time because I can't remember it has got so many universities and everything but you do a great job I think you're the largest employer in the area and I know a lot of Asbury Park residents work for you so again thank you very much for all you do could you leave a business card before you leave sure. okay and yeah when you're open in the spring i would love to take a tour okay certainly thank you thank you and anything thank you need you. from us please thank Reach you very out. much again really appreciate your support thank, thank you. you thank you great job We'll next move on to our next presentation by Sackman Enterprises regarding requested amendments to the Central Business District Redevelopment Plan for 711 Madison Avenue and 574 Cookman Avenue. Can you keep this short? between OCA and uh, SHARP, which is another architectural company. So, um, in order to uh, do this project, Sackman uh, went and interviewed a lot of architects to try to see, you know, for them to come up with their vision in order to put the building on top of an existing building. So based on that exercise, uh, they selected SHARP and OCA architect to be the architects to do this project. So basically, we are looking at um, a building on the first floor, which is an existing, it's a existing uh, uh, bank building, I believe. It's, from what I heard, it's gone through several uh, uses. So 
Um, and the challenge is to try to put something on top of a, a building such as that. So Sharp uh, did some studies working with us, of course, and we came up with this concept of trying to put the building on top of it, but make it light. So that building, <coughs> the addition that we put on top of it will be very light so that it, it doesn't uh, impose on, on the existing building there. So on the first floor would be retail, mostly. Um, because the building is so tall, uh, it's almost uh, 30 feet you know, in space and volume. So we are planning to put a mezzanine in on the second, you know, on the up on towards the back of the be a mezzanine. So you have a, I think, I believe right now there's a second restaurant uh, outfit that would be in that space. And the plan then is to, um, on top of that, you know, build some units. Uh, we are planning to do six units per floor, so a total of 18 units. It's mostly um, one bedrooms and, and studios, uh, and two bedrooms on, on that level, uh, three of them. Um, we believe that uh, this is a very good use of um, you know, that space over the, the existing building, and that this particular design with interest will you know, be iconic and will reflect the direction that Asbury is going. So this, these are the studies of uh, some of what we have. To continue with that, obviously the board is familiar with the building that's on the corner of the U.S. Realty and the condition that is a horrendous condition that it had been. Uh, Sacred Enterprise looking and they've begun the restoration of that building to bring it back to its former glory. Needless to say, it's an expensive, very expensive endeavor to restore that building. Um, the residential units we can fit in within the neighborhood as a mixed use building. Also, also obviously the cost, the substantial cost of restoring the beautiful historic building underneath. The 70 feet will match as across the street. We already are up on 70 feet on the Steinbeck building across the street. So it's not as good 70 feet here will be at a place within the neighborhood. So we do have, in a sense, a sister corner that has a building that reaches to that height. Also, seeing what we have within the CBD area, it fits within that, provides beautiful visual entrance into the downtown area in that corner of uh, Asbury, which really needs it at this point. And that's going to happen. I'm so, refresh my memory. What's it zoned for now? That is a CB, it's a CBD zone. Right. Um, it's, uh, it's permitted in mixed use building. No, no, no. Height wise. Height wise, 45 feet. I'm sorry. So that is number one. We'll move on to several other questions. I'm sorry, any other questions? Are those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are those blinds? I, I'm a little confused by the design. Is that, what, what are those things? Are those like movable doors? No, those are just a metal um, system that we put in the universe. A, a, a louver system in front you know, of the building itself. Uh, just to try to create, you know, verticality to the to the look of the building. But you are, if you are in this space, you'll be able to, you know, look out. So this provides, you know, shading, depending on where the sound is. Uh, and provides visual interest yeah, to, the to the building. Now, the design on top is distinct from the design on the bottom, right? correct? Yes. Is there a reason for that when you take a historic building and building it on top? Why do you distinguish between the building? Well, it, it, it's, 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 uh, it's because uh, there's a challenge of trying not to compete with what is there already. Because we try to, you know, and the studies that we did, there's like about seven different design iterations of this. We found that, you know, trying to separate the new from the old by making the, the one on, on top a little lighter gives a sense of scale and, and size to, to what is there already. So that's why we, you know, most of it is all glass. And you don't want to replicate a historical building because you simply can't do that. Yeah, so. And I noticed that you, in a sense, have a curtain that comes down on the right side to combine those two buildings, create a single unit. Yes, yes. That, the idea is to tie that in with, with what is there on top. Instead of just having the, a layered kick effect, where if, if this is all solid, then you have uh, the illusion of just having something up on top of the other one, but trying to break it down with the scale, that's why we made that interest for the entrance. Of the, oh, go ahead. What's going on on the roof there? I see greenery up on the roof in this, in this rendering that we have. 
The exterior louvers, do they move? Uh, no, they are fixed. Okay. They are, they are fixed. And of the 18 units, are any deemed to be affordable? We have got into that. That certainly can be worked out through redevelopers too, in terms of paying for those units. And is there parking for these units? No. We're going to get into the 7-Eleven building, the 7-Eleven, which they're proposing has 181 space, so it has additional capacity in there. So why don't we get into that next project? Then? Okay. That's where all the parking is. Kevin. Kevin. Do you have anything to say about this? As far as fire is concerned, would that, that melt quickly? Hey, Michael, can you email me these links? Because I'm never going to keep them. What is it? Oh. Okay. Eighteen units. Okay. And is there an elevator? Yes. We have an elevator on two sets of stairs. Go ahead. So, so seven eleven is a, a building that's directly uh, behind the seven hundred Banks Avenue, which is a building that's currently under construction. Uh, OCA worked on that project uh, site now as well. So, with that in mind, uh, we. With this project, we are trying to do something a little different. We actually have seven different uh, elevation studies done for Sakna. But borrowing on what, what was done for 574 Kutma, which is you know that whole um, flair of trying to create a different interest in, in, in that area, that's why we went with this uh, plan. The, uh, for 711, uh, we have a, a basement, uh, which we have a uh, approximately 132 parking spaces just for the basement 132 okay. and then on the first floor we are putting another 56 parking space for a total of 188 parking spaces now because in order to maximize on the parking we had to increase the, um, the, the ceiling area the floor to floor height of the building hence the reason why the second part of this uh, presentation will be the request for variance of the height. So that allowed us to provide 188 parking spots. The building itself has 51 units, so there's excess parking in, in that building. So on the first floor, we have retail, uh, which we have retail space, the plant is there. Also, we have an um, exercise room as well as parking on the first floor. Second third and fourth floor will be uh, one bedroom and seven, uh, seven um, studio units for a total of 17 units. So for in, the build, in the whole building we have 51 uh, units there in the whole building. Again we have 188 parking spots, 51 units. So yes, you know, effort was made to create a lot of parking spaces. The park requirement for the 7-Eleven Madison building would be 87 parking spaces so we have over 100 additional parking spaces. So. We'd be able to deal with parking on the other building, the 574 Cookham building. Also, we'll be coming back, we'll touch upon a little bit tonight, the property across the street, which the council is certainly aware of, is the Savoy building, the Elkinda building. Uh, we're going to be coming back in for a plan amendment relative to that property also. It's approved as migrant units. However, we're going to come back in for a plan amendment for a luxury hotel. We want to do a boutique hotel there, um, which we think would fit within the downtown. The downtown does not allow hotels under the CBD plan, so we're looking to get a hotel in there, a luxury hotel. We would need parking for that hotel. Again, that's the reason we're doing it. We need the height here. If we go an additional five feet on this building at 7-Eleven, up to 50 feet, then we can get in the 188 parking spaces. It's only allowed for 45 feet at this point, so only ask for an additional five feet. 
keep it in mind in terms of parking, we also have that 607 property that we're looking to get a plan amendment on, so we can do that five level parking deck over 500 plus 600 parking spaces. So we're trying to work all the obviously significant amount of parking in with these proposals, but in order to do it, we need certain height additions to get the additional parking in there, also to be able to find. What's the height here right now again? I'm sorry. The, the, the what's, it, what's the zone height there now? 45. 45. 45. And what are you asking for? 50. And by raising that ceiling, we're going to be able to get that additional parking in that building. And none of those are at 45 feet now, though, right? Essentially. They're all staggered. It's all different. Okay. Um, when you look across the street, the Kenneth Building, where there's the Savoy Theater, that's at, well, there was a plan amendment years ago that I think raised it to 70. Um, but initially, under the original CBD plan, it was 45. So okay, the, 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 the Savoy Building. That's right. Okay. That's right. But with the project we had before for the micro units, we got the plan amendment to go to 70. Okay. So when you get a plan amendment, well, I digress. Yeah, the plan amendments are, near, are for that particular site. Um, and under the way things are done here, it's not done by variance. Under your redevelopment plan, it's not like that. Okay. So. What I want to do also is touch upon then the Savoy building just to give you an idea of what we're looking for in the plan amendments that are required for that building. Now, as council, mayor council is aware, we have a historic Kimmith building within the downtown that houses the Savoy Theater in there. Um, the building, the Savoy Theater, I think, has been vacant itself for about 40 years, went through different uses over the years. Um, that theater, the interior space, is going to be restored. That's a part of the plan for this project. We were approved for micro units, I believe, 48. 48 micro units before the planning board previously. Things got slowed down because of litigation that had occurred with the adjacent property that has been settled. Um, we're able now to continue to develop the property, but in the interim, the idea came up about doing a hotel there. Um, obviously, when you look at what's been going on by the water, there's a significant demand for a hotel space within Asbury Park. You don't have anything in the downtown. Um, I think it warrants that the downtown have their own hotel, have an event space within the hotel that can be utilized, bring people in, particularly in the off season, to be able to occupy the building. And we have a plan um, here that we uh, we talk about, but what it does is pr it provides for a hotel, a luxury hotel in the downtown, a boutique hotel that I think would be commensurate with a lot of boutique hotels that you see around the country, uh, the operators that we're discussing this project. But, okay. Want to talk about it? Yes, um, so basically, uh, the 711 building that we just presented is across from this. So <coughs> the idea is to try to maintain um, the look of the building and then uh, you know, move on top of it, as you mentioned. Um, so, you know, we believe that you know the, uh, the synergy between 7-Eleven and, and Savoy and that whole street, also 700 banks being completed, that this whole that whole area uh, warrants something of, of this nature in terms of the architecture as well as the, the, uh, the, the use of, of the building. That's be there. Uh, the plan also is that since we have uh, excess parking at 7-Eleven. Um, that, that will service the hotel as well. This is right across. And, you know, the, the parking at 7-Eleven will be attended, will be uh, attended by parking, so they'll be able to use that as well. As you can see, the, the facade of the building is maintained in its historical view. Um, on the western portion of the building, we have to go up. We're going to go up. Uh, that's our plan. Additional 20 feet. There's a reason for that. Um, in order to do this hotel, we need 100 rooms. And the reason we need 100 rooms is that we need a local license, obviously, to get an operator to support the hotel, support the restaurants, support the theater that's in there, the event space. 
So that's the minimum that we need is 100 rooms. So the additional height allows us to do it. But not only that, in addition to that, by going up the additional space, we can do a rooftop pool, we can do event space up on the roof, so it adds additional elements to this project to really create that boutique, luxury hotel in the downtown of Asbury. Keeping in mind, by doing the hotel, as opposed to doing the micro units, we're also talking about a significant amount of jobs. Did you say a rooftop pool? Yes, a rooftop pool. But we would be employing probably 100 people, over 100 people, by doing this type of use, as opposed to doing the micro unit. Where people would live there, obviously you'd have superintendent to maintain the building, but nothing like the permanent jobs that this type of use would create. So we'll come back with the hotel for a separate plan amendment, but I just wanted the, the mayor and council to get a flavor of how all this fits in all the different pieces together with regard to that. I'm not an architect, obviously, or a planner by any stretch, and so, but, so this question is probably a little bit more to you. So I see um, the visually how those, how you added height in a way that still respected the architecture of the Savoy. Um, and so that I get on the first one, it's, and this is the second time it's in front of me where it feels like this. You take like a, an architecturally very downtrodden building, no, no stretch, but in the, in the very first slide, a architecturally super off the chart sharp building. And then you put on something so modern so modern to that that it to me takes away the feel of the super to me strong architecture that already exists there like this one i think you really meshed it well and the second one did you're build you're cut a bit starting from scratch there so so that's a different that's a different monster but the first one it's and this is the second time that you've brought me these structures where you take and and i'm sure there's a planning reason and i am not a planner where you take a historic building and then you go super modern and then it just feels like it doesn't match to me but that said i mean that's just my opinion and it doesn't doesn't mean anything anybody else i agree i agree with amy it kind of looks like something was plopped on that didn't quite belong there. But again, I'm not a plan reader, nor an architect. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next presentation is by the Director of Planning and Redevelopment, Michelle Alonzo, regarding uh, presentation of parking, fencing, and landscaping in the public right of way of 406 Deal Drive residential parking lot. council and members of the public tonight we we had a request by the owner of 46 steel lake drive to um to place two parking spaces in what is considered the public right away the owner um, wants to expand his, the spaces in his parking lot he's able to do so by uh, 
by taking down some small structures on the site and re eliminating what is a green space at the beginning of the parking lot. Um, so the, he received approval from the planning board to expand the parking lot, adding seven spaces for a total of 30, but two of the spaces are in the public right away. Um, currently, myself and the transportation planner, Mr. Manzella, currently do not recommend uh, without further study and consideration, the two spaces in the public right away. We are asking that the owner provide a what's known as a turning template for vehicles because these spaces are so, the curb cut is narrow. The spaces are so close to the sidewalk that that's something we'd like to see, but also, um, there's also, there's currently a fence in the public right away that doesn't have previous approvals and that the, it's, it's, um, the fence would stay furthering obstructing the sight line we believe, but we would like to see a little, a little bit more. And the landscape and buffer from what I could tell from the drawing is under three feet and <coughs> So they're supposed to have parking lots are supposed to have a 10 foot landscape buffer the planning board did grant a waiver from that requirement but two feet is pretty tight for plant material so this is before you because the the owner has requested it even though we the planning department feels it needs further study this is the one you gave us the memo that yes we got, right Can I ask a quick question about sure. the math on this one with the, and, and I'm sure I'm, I'm not reading it right, but the second sentence is, he uh, received approval from the planning board to expand the lot to add seven parking spaces to ex to the existing 13 space lot resulting in 30 spaces. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's a typo on okay. my part. Just I'm checking. sorry. Just checking. Because that's I'm all right. It's no big deal. No, so it's, it's 20. Okay. So I have to read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Don't worry. I'm, I'm just saying I, I didn't get to like read it, read it. I got to read it and think about it. Right. But at this time, again, at we, this time, I'll defer to them talking to you. Longer. Right. That we would like to see some turning radius studies before yeah. we we come up with a, a final recommendation. Michelle, is this entrance to this parking lot on Hill Lake Drive? No. Okay. Park. No, the I on Park. It yes. Okay. And I did provide. Um, the Google image right. and the drawing that was submitted to to us. And is are there any more questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This time we're at the review of agenda items for March twenty eighth. If I can address that for one second. Um, I was the attorney of record. Well, the attorney of record said that's fine. Okay. Um, no problem with that. The fence is existing. Uh, my recently bought, but bought the property in here and here. No fence is existing. But I'll provide the evidence. That's not official. Okay. We work together with we'll those two. Yep. You're on. Uh, <coughs> Resolution 2018-125 is a special event application. <coughs> Resolution 2018-126 is a refund to a subsequent payment um, made on a on 1006 bond and 1700 web. Someone had a lien on this and someone tried to pay it. Someone accidentally paid a subsequent. So this is just correcting a, uh, a billing error. Resolution 2018-127 is accepting uh, Hazardous Discharge Site Remediation Grant, HDSR, HDSRF, for the firehouse. Um, but the EDA is sending us the, the final paperwork allegedly this week, um, so we can accept the grant and start moving with a remedial investigation at the firehouse. Resolution 2018-139 was added today um, at the 
at my request, it's approved, approving the continuation of a bid threshold of the bid threshold um, with the appointment of a qualified purchasing agent. Right now, I'm serving as the temporary purchasing agent. Um, my tenure ends March 31st. I'm allowed to serve for two years in a temporary role. Um, we have hired a purchasing agent who ha is a certified QPA, and we like to continue the existing bid thresholds. Any questions on the consent agenda? Yeah, hold on a second. I'm lost between uh -huh. new and old. Did we get to the ones that you're going to? No. no. Okay. But well, 139 is a consent and 137, 138 are Because it was add on to today. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. That's where I was confused. Okay, thank you. Individual resolutions. Uh, 128 is payment of bills. Resolution 2018-129 is appointing an alternative, alternate city prosecutor for 2018. Uh, we have a conflict where our existing prosecutor can't serve. Um, Mr. Affetto's firm can't serve in the role of city attorney under the rules of the court, so we needed to appoint someone for a city-related matter. Um, so this is probably just a one-time deal. Uh, he's been, he served before in an acting position. Um, no complaints, so we're recommending this appointment. Um, resolution 2018-130 is the extension of the approvals for the food truck. Um, this is a three-year extension to finish the six-year term. Resolution 2018-131 is an extension of the transport of liquid such through May of next year. This is the last extension. Um, last year was an extension and the pricing was phenomenal. It was about half of what most people had been when they gone out to bid. Uh, when the city bid this out, three or four years ago, it had um, additional years. The company is still interested. Uh, Rudy at the sewer plant says they're phenomenal. They're very responsive. We got a good rate. And we have to go back out to bid next year. <coughs> um, resolution 132 is authorizing TNM to prepare initial design and permitting for the proposed lifeguard station. Uh, right now, where we are is we don't have a major concept. We have an idea of what a lifeguard station could look like. This will allow TNM to do survey work um, and speak to CAFRA to see if it's permitted. This will be paid out of the beach utility. Uh, we've been putting money aside for this design. Uh, resolution 133 is the purchase of personal protection gear for the fire department through capital. This continues the uh, five-year uh, installation plan of, of the personal protection gear. Off the resolution 134 is also a capital purchase. It's the purchase of an ambulance for the fire department um, through the Houston Galveston Cooperative, which we are a member of. Resolution 135 is the purchase of radio equipment for the fire SUV. This is also capital. Uh, as you'll remember at the last meeting, the council authorized the purchase of a fire SUV um, due to the fact that the price was gonna go up $1,000 if we didn't get the purchase order in the next day. We were still working on the quote when that was authorized. Auth uh, resolution 136 is to permit BRS to conduct soil, soil borings in vertical profiles on the right of way on 801 Main Street as part of the EPA grant. Um, this is part of the remedial investigation. 137 and 138, we are requesting to be tabled. Um, introduction of ordinances, we are requesting that you table 2018-15, which is the amendment to the Waterfront Redevelopment Plan, and 2018-20, uh, I'm sorry, 20, Yeah. yes, I'm sorry, 2018-20, which is a special assessment ordinance, as they haven't been completed at this time. Moving on to the second reading, 2018-10 uh, and 11 are establishing certain salaries um, for three positions within the city. 2018-12, which is licensing of towing, changes the inspection date. And then 2018-13 is yes. a second reading for Deal Lake Drive, in which the city received a $600,000 grant to repay it. That was the towing and storage fees. Is that the was to, oh, sorry. to just clarify the fees. We did the other one already. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. And that's all. Is there any questions? The 2018-16 the lease agreement from the fire equipment? Yes. Do we have a, a, a length of time that we're going to be leasing that space? Uh, right now, the draft lease is one year. One year. Um, 
mic. Can you explain 20, 2018-11? You don't have to call out any names or anything like that. I'm just curious about it. Second reading, public hearing. Uh, that is to create the purchasing position and an assistant CFO position. 2018-18, the parking. So it looks like on Bangs Avenue between Main Street and Memorial. Bangs is removed. That, oh, that removed. was amended and has been removed. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 2018-13. This is on Deal Lake Drive starting at what location? That's being pulled. That's being pulled. Yes. Okay. Tabled, I'm sorry. 13? No. 13th Deal Lake Drive. It's parked to the end. It's, oh, it's I apologize. I'm sorry. It's from Park to Rock Harbor Port. I thought it was 20. Oh, so it's not being pulled. No, no, that one's the part of That's the one we got the state funding for. All right, so it's starting, I apologize. At, it's starting at Park Avenue and going, going down and e going east. Going east. I don't to know the, which way east is. Yes, yes, going east to the Lock Arbor Port. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. 2018-20. We're pulling that one. That one's oh, pulled. thank gosh. I have no understanding of that. We're asking you to table it. Okay. Table. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't. So, nope. Next. Matters by the City Council. Um, I just want to remind everyone that the um, Easter pageant is this Sunday at uh, 1 o'clock on the boardwalk. That's it. Nothing, thank you. I have no comments at this time. <laughs> Other than why do you have that shirt on? Well, good question. <laughs> why am I wearing a cowboy shirt? Because April 19th, Thursday is the rodeo for recreation. There's literature on the table. It's a great fundraiser to make sure every child in Asbury Park can attend our fabulous recreation program during the summer run together with the Board of Education where in the morning time kids go to school in the afternoon time it's all recreation and it is to me the best recreation program in Monmouth Ocean County maybe the state so anybody looking to donate please donate 100% uh, after cost goes right to the recreation trust fund and it's spent totally on children we do this every other year because the first year we were lucky enough to raise <coughs> enough to make it go two years so again if everybody wants to pick up one on the way out and make a donation deeply appreciated so thank you yeah the first year also just uh, John's being modest but the first year put over 200 kids over two years through the recreation program mm -hmm. it was very successful because the town and a lot of people outside of the town gave back which is deeply appreciated uh, I'd like to say the same thing I wish everybody a happy Easter and a safe Passover and everybody have a good holiday and that's all I have Matters by the city manager, you have two items under beach regulations. Uh, yes, um, we still need to know something about smoking. Um, as I've had some discussions with all of you, um, it still seems to be scattered on a uniform idea of what it, it could pertain to. Um, so the drop dead to do something would be the May meeting. Uh, the April, the second meeting in April, because uh, we still need to advertise the ordinance. Um, also, we just want to make you aware that if you see in the news at the end of last year, especially in Belmar, they had regulations invol involving tents, that there was major tent structures. Um, we have reviewed our city ordinance, myself and the city attorney talked today, along with the beach manager, that we do have provisions in the ordinance that we can pass a resolution that if this does become a problem, that we'll be prepared to handle it. So the only thing we really need is an idea on smoking. Which so I don't you're looking for guidance from us? Yeah. So why doesn't everybody within the next couple of weeks get in touch, think about it, get in touch with the city manager, say what, how they feel, and then that will give them guidance how to draw up the resolution. I think there's no question that we're going to ban smoking through the majority of the, of the beach. I think the question is just, do we, do we go from completely banning it on the entire beach or allowing one area to have smoking at it? Right. Thank you.
Michael, when you say that we, if there's a problem with tents, that it, it is in the ordinance. Um, but if if we find a problem with tents and we need to enact something or act on it, how long would that take? Do we have to go through any steps? Uh, the city code says the city council can authorize via resolution any measures. So, so we, we have just to go the next council to meeting. council meeting. Yeah. Okay. So right. no longer than ten days. So okay. why don't we do that at the same time? So we're going to do that preseason. No, if if it happens, because last year, why wait for it to happen and then have to wait another to wait 10, ten days, days. and yeah. somebody gets arrived? Because we don't know what the the issues <coughs> could be. Don't know what we don't know what <coughs> issues may pop up um, because Belmar's issue was more that it was blocking the view of a lot, um, and then here it seemed that more of the the tents were towards the back of the beach, which isn't a problem because it's not blocking the ocean. So if we keep them towards the back. That it's not an issue, but we just want to be be ready that we you know we have something in place because we. So it who, might happen. Who keeps them toward the back? The people did. Okay, so they kind of self. Yeah, they're self yeah, managing, managing it right managing. now. Okay, all right. And so we, and, and the major key to that is with everything. Although I feel like God, we're putting a lot of regulations. Um, next, it'll be music. Um, but God, is enforcement right? So we're going. We have the enforcement power for the smokers and the tents. Yes. To okay. Yes, there's an introduction to to change to to make better the existing beach regulations that allow. The way it's written now is that there's only one entity under dog licensing. If you read it, the strictest sense that the police and the lifeguards can enforce dogs. But the way we were proposing into the introduction tonight, it actually covers the whole beach. It, it wasn't as clear, so we're making it much more clear. Anything else? That's it. Matters by the city attorney. I have nothing at this time. Okay, at this time we'll break until for four minutes. We have four until minutes. 7 to call the order to regular council meeting of the city of Asbury Park. Okay. Council Member Chapman. Here. Council Member Clayton. Here. Council Member Kendall. Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Here. Please rise for a silent prayer moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 4, 2018, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Move on to participation. Can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? Move it. Second. Each member of the public who wishes to speak, please come up to the mic, state your name and address for the record, and each member of the public has three minutes to speak. Seeing none. No. <laughs> Hello, Mayor and Council. Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. Um, tonight was very interesting seeing the new buildings that are going up. Um, what I wanted to bring up was the building on Cookman Avenue in the 500 block. Um, Donald Trump was told everybody he was going to save some of the architecture from the Bonwood Tower building when he built Trump Tower, and somehow. A lot of that stuff got destroyed. You have to make sure that when they renovate that building, that they protect the facade, and all bets are off if the facade gets destroyed, because who knows how fragile that facade's going to become once they start renovating the building. So you need something to make sure that facade doesn't get destroyed. I mean, I don't know exactly what they're going to do to preserve it or protect it, but. Once it starts falling apart, they may say they have to knock it all down, and then you're going to get an ugly modern building. Because Amy brought up a good point. That was the, mo the worst combination I ever saw in architecture, with the top of that building with the old thing. They need to incorporate it better. Maybe they should copy some of the ideas from the Savoy, I mean, um, 
Seville and uh, the building on the ocean front, but you could do better architecture with the arches because you're going to have an antique chair with modern furniture. No one does that. You know, it's the building, you, you were right to catch, uh, catch that, Amy. It, it's hard on the eye. The other building on uh, Lake Avenue, that was interesting that they were doing different facades, but I really think you should do fake Victorian because we face Ocean Grove and you want it to look pleasant for the eye when you're going down the street that they're, they're the match because you have the beer garden that looks like an old factory, that looks cool. I think a modern building will be too tough um, of a contrast. So would you at least talk to some of the people on the board about that? Then the other thing is, all I heard him say, we need a hundred room to make the hotel work. Well, good, you need a hundred room, then we need some free public space. That could be a second senior center, maybe it could be an office for the Chamber of Commerce or a welcome center or storage for the Historical Society. We need something free if you're going to need 100 room. And that's what you have to say, because you have the chance to tell you what we want. Then the other thing is, I ask every few meetings, what are the goals that were accomplished last year? I have seen none in writing. And what are the goals in writing this year? It holds you accountable, it holds the city manager accountable, and it holds the department heads accountable. No one's being held accountable. Is everybody even using the time clocks anymore? Or did that get put away too? Um, and but then I want to say thanks to Michelle. I called her up and she got back to me right away. I appreciate that. Um, so like okay. half the time, I can't reach anybody when I call. It's easier to come down to City Hall, but Michelle called back right away. So thank you. So, so, so can I get an answer about the goals? No. About, about the what? The goals. The well, last year's goals, they're not in writing, that were accomplished, I, and what been, are the goals been, this year? I've been tardy on my State of the City address, so that's being worked on. No, I'm still writing. Yeah. So it'll be in print? Oh yeah, of course. Okay. Like last year. Yeah, yeah. And you guys kind of understand what I was saying about the building? Oh, with the hotel? And they need a hundred rooms? It's okay, but they haven't come before us for anything. No, but like when they, they do, we need maybe 50% of the employees live in the city. You, you, you made it very clear as far as the time clocks, yes, they were being used. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, General. And then the one other thing I want to say, and Jerry, you can sit for this, is that you know we're not voting on any of these buildings tonight, right? It's a, it's a, for lack of a better word, taking the temperature on, on what we think, as they're, opposed to They're conceptual voting. ideas. Okay, I'm okay. Well, you, I, I only say that because you said, Jerry, um, a lot of new buildings going up. So these buildings aren't going up yet, they're just... No, they're testing the water. Yeah. You can do training now before they think they have the upper hand. Uh, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Uh, I, I, I'd like to know, uh, we have, uh, tonight you're going to authorize to hire a purchasing agent, a new one. And what's an accountant payable? What does he do? We never had him before. I mean, I'd like to know what the CFO does, too. You have all these people doing little jobs. I, I mean, $110,000 for a salary? I don't know about that. I don't think we've grown that much where you pay $110,000 to two people. I mean, you should pay attention to these things. You are given so, so much money you're spending tonight. Three bond issues? Three of them? A new ambulance? Which I rode in one two years ago. We got to get another one? I'd like to know about that. And a radio for um, the for the fire SUV, and also uh, the fire for the SUV. There's so many things on here that you're spending so much money. And also, I'd like to know why the budget went up $2 million. It went from $45 million to 47 something. I'd like to know that answer. And you know what? Look around you. All these other towns, Ocean Township, 21 million is their budget. Is it bigger than Asbury? I think so. I mean, like, what are we doing with all this money we're spending? And the other thing, there's amendments in here for the redevelopment plan. They always seem to be 
for the redeveloper. They're never like for the person that's asking for something, like what happened at the zoning meeting the other night. He wants to build a hotel. Why, why can't he? I mean, what's the reason? Because he's in the redevelopment area? You can't amend that? You're amending everything else for the developer. I mean, these people have been here a lifetime. They deserve consideration. I, I don't know, I just don't get it. What happens here between the zoning board and the planning board? Maybe they should get out on the street more often and see what the city needs. I'm not too happy with the zoning board, I'll tell you that. Uh, and that's about it. I want to know why we're hiring all these. Well, I know we need a purchasing agent. But, I mean, they, you have so many people in that department now. And $110,000? I mean, it, that, that, most, the police department are making over 100000 You know, when, if you're in the Marine Corps, you don't even make 50000 and they're fighting a war. So, why is it 110,000? Okay, read it. It goes from 22 to 110. Th there has to be a salary range, so that's the minimum and the maximum. Well, which is it? Which, what are they getting? I don't know because they haven't been hired not, yet. I, I'm, I'm here long enough to know they get the max. Okay, read it. Okay, you, you, you're, you're cut off as far as speaking. We're going to answer your question. Okay. And I forgot half of them because why do we need a new ambulance? Because the old ones are getting old and the ambulances are going 24 seven. You know, we have a lot of ambulance calls in this town. As far as your. I mean, your people are hired no, 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 to streamline no, no, government. No, 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 you're done. It's our time. As far as your like okay. synopsis, as far as bonding, you're totally wrong. As far as like you, you, you failed to, and you wouldn't do it last meeting. And you won't do it this meeting. I'm not even going to ask you. You failed. To, you know, you, you want to criticize and you want to like hit us over the head, which I have no problem with. I've known you for so long. I'm used to it. But you, you fail to recognize there will be a tax decrease this year, and you won't admit that. So I don't know why, and I don't. That's between you. I don't care. You, what happened to the zoning board? Don't have a clue. Not going to get involved. Go to the zoning board. Uh, Not only a tax decrease, but we finally got off transitional aid after right. over a decade being on it. We got the highest Moody's, Moody's rating in 20 some years, you know, which reduces our bonding rate. So as much as you're saying we're not doing anything, I think we're making a lot of progress. And I think as far as you saying we have too much staff in finance, I think you're totally wrong. We don't have enough staff and that's why we're adding a position. Somebody left and we're adding a position that will take purchasing. Right now the city manager is doing purchasing. Do you want him like running the city and running these projects or every project, be it on the east side, west side, north side, south side, or do you want him to go through like 20 reviews to see like did this company submit all their paperwork for a tractor and a truck? That's a waste of his time and do we need to purchase an agent yes and that's why it's being hired as far as the rest of your questions i honestly forgot most of them. michael if you want to add anything uh there was a question on the two million dollars in the budget increase approximately seven hundred thousand salary and wages um and then the other expenses is 1.3 million but as has been stated there actually is no tax increase this year and the average house is going down the increase of revenues was miscellaneous revenues um, in which the fire department from the ambulance brought in seven hundred thousand dollars in revenue from calls and um, using more of our fund balance because we've been able to regenerate um, additional revenue outside of what it was anticipated so the average house as we stated is going to see a tax decrease of forty six dollars so we're, we're trying Rita I know what you're saying and but I think sometimes you see things this way, we see this way, and but I know what, what, what you're the saying. Taxes, what we're trying. Oh, wait a minute. The rate went down. The taxes didn't go down. You said. Remember that uh, little quote you did last week. The well, amount to be you raised. You said by that uh, that an average house that's two hundred ninety-seven thousand right. is going to only be paying forty-six dollars. That's what you said. We'll be paying less than forty. Yeah, but whose house is worth four, a two hundred and sixty? Okay, Rita, your, your, your time's up, Rita. So we're not going to have a cross conversation. We tried to answer all of your questions. If you want to follow up, you can call me and you call the city manager, and I'll talk to you. 
Motion to close public? No, no. Well, then. Okay. Shonda Neal, Manor Drive, Neptune, New Jersey. I'm here again being a persistent to request the city council to move on the receivership for the West Side Community Center. And I'm requesting you to make it a priority because there is no leadership there. Uh, we have, um, as you know, been working diligently for over four months now. And we have a plan in place. We have fundraising in place. We have uh, over 10 people who are committed, people who are qualified to run a sufficient nonprofit organization and are committed to getting the 501c3 status. So now I understand that um, there's some time you're taking, uh, 40 days to make sure that they're not going to appeal or to see if they're going to appeal. But the bottom line is that there's no leadership there. And why wait after 10 years of having a dysfunctional leadership in place? Why give them another two months, 40 days, five months? It just doesn't make sense now. You know, our kids are at stake. Our community is at stake. And so, you know, we request that you move on this. And could you please tell me if there's another reason why you haven't, please let me know. Okay, if you're done. Yes. No, it's the same answer for the last two meetings. You're right, on February 27th, the judge rendered a decision and by law, they have 45 days to appeal. We cannot change the law and we're not gonna get in the middle of a lawsuit of doing something until that appeal time has expired. So that appeal time, I believe is April 13th. So if you come to the April 11th meeting and ask the same question, I'm gonna give you the same answer. Until that is done, their legal rights, guaranteed by the court, has expired, we will not take any action. Is it on the back of our burner? Absolutely, when that happens. But until then, legally and morally, we're not going to. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Felicia Simmons. Um, Hello, Felicia. Hello, 1034 Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, I'm again, I'm here also with the committee and um, I just heard your answer. But in that answer, um, as we wait another few weeks, as you wait another few weeks, there's more and more decay happening um, to the city and to the center and to the center also, center also. Um, we stand here because we stand for kids and community I've sit and I've watched the city change over my lifetime. I specifically seen a, um, the fast paces changed in the last five years. Um, knowing a little bit of the history and um, the financing and the structure that's happening. Millions of dollars have come up to make plans for the city. I just calculated in my mind having a previous um, conversation before I came here. Millions of dollars into plans for the city. Right, plans on how to deal with the West Side, how to help the West Side buy into this renaissance that's happening here in the city for most, um, but not for us. Millions of dollars in plans, and all we're asking for is not a dime, but um, your action to make sure that these plans that in the past have sit on um, desks and in the backs of um, offices and, and on shelves collecting dust. Um, these plans that you ask us to come and participate in and when we do come and participate in and we say, give us another chance, we have hope in this plan, right? All these plans and these extra consultants and all these things to come up with something to help us. We're saying, we're here, we're here to help ourselves. But in this case, we need your help, your elected officials to help us with these plans to make sure that we have a future here in the city. Now again, I'm not gonna ask for a response because you gave your response, but in that time that you're sitting there waiting, knowing that it is an option for you to take action, it is an option. 
um, and you've given benefits of the doubt for past administrations over at the west side. We're just saying, take some action. And when, as soon as the 13th hit, let your decisions come on the 14th. Let by the next meeting you have uh, um, something to do for us over at the west side, which again, we've got plans. We haven't received any action. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. Kim Lenz, uh, Wayside, New Jersey. Um, we met with you, uh, two of your uh, members, about well, three months ago, uh, Ms. Chapman and Mr. Moore, and with the city manager. At that time, we expressed our uh, what our program was and our intent to uh, do what we could to save the center. And we, you know who we are. Many of us have uh, history goes back to the center to the time we were children. Several of us, of us were uh, board presidents on the board, whatever, you know. So we've got an intimate uh, relationship with the center in the past. It's a 75-year-old agency. It's been very instrumental in terms of uh, doing much to help children in Asbury Park. In fact, you had a uh, Black History Month program, I understand, a couple weeks ago. And Helen Elliott was the keynote speaker. And of course, uh, anyone who's been around Asbury Park for a while knows Helen used to has a relationship with the city of Asbury Park. She used to work for the city. She uh, retired from Brookdale. And uh, she's a d dynamic person. I understand she made a statement that, uh, as part of her uh, speech, that um, there were three things she did when she was a child. She was allowed to go to school, to church, and the West Side Community Center. Now the question is this right here. When we met with you guys several months ago, uh, we didn't get a commitment then. And we still haven't gotten a commitment now in terms of whether or not the mayor and council has a disposition towards pursuing a receivership or not. Um, I know you guys pursued the tax action. I'm not sure if you guys had an end plan or not, other than the possibly foreclosing the property. We came forward with a legal option uh, for the city to pursue. In fact, it's the only viable legal option to pursue, and that's a receivership. And yet, we have not yet received any commitment whatsoever from mayor and council, any indication whatsoever as to whether or not you support what it is um, we're trying to do, that the city should be trying to do with us. Now. We just lost a child on Ridge Avenue. Actually, we lost three people. We lost a child, we lost the two uh, individuals involved in that shooting. Three lives lost, and those aren't the only lives lost. So the question is whether or not Mayor and Council has a commitment to uh, doing something to help these children out. Mr. Kendall knows the uh, West Side Community Center. We have a, a Facebook page on now. We happen to find a picture with him in it. He, had a he was on the championship basketball team with uh, Donald Hamry as your coach. I don't know if you got to see that picture. But uh, you know the center, yeah, you know it's history. It. Okay. Yeah, you know it's history, you know it's programs. And uh, I was a board president for 15 years. I came on in the early 80s and we turned the center around. We even expanded the uh, center's operation to uh, purchase the property on, Rich, on Bangs Avenue. And we named it the Rainbow Learning Center and we opened it up to provide uh, daycare services for uh, unwed mothers. We did so many different programs. The center's going down now, it has no 501c3 status. It is not in the New Jersey Charities Registry. It is dysfunctional. The question is, what is the mayor and council going to do? And uh, <clears throat> there is no legal or moral impediment. Let me just say there's no legal or moral impediment to your proceeding at this juncture. Mr. Fetto can tell you, the 45-day appeal period has nothing to do with the city's right to proceed as a creditor under the receivership statute um, whatsoever. If you lost the appeal, if you lost the appeal, you I might lose credit. All right, well, my question is, are you going to make a commitment or not? When the time is appropriate, yes. That means you're going to you're going to be willing to proceed. We're going to, no. When the time is, we, we've made the commitment to the entire town through, not this, this effort, through every effort. You probably weren't here when we said, please donate to the recreation for rodeo. So, I mean, we've made a commitment to everybody in this town to do the best for everybody. So, when the time of it has expired, we will take action. We're not going to put out there, it's like, hey, I'm going to rob a bank, Mr. Police Officer. I'm going to tell you what bank I'm going to rob at what time. I mean, we're not going to put our cards on the table until we have to. And that's when the 45 days has expired. All right, well, availing yourself of a receiver is not the equivalent of going to a, yeah. robbing a bank. That's all I'm saying. Good and it, it's also not the only option, right? The receivership's not the only option. Are there other options? There's other yes. options we're talking about. There are no other options other than foreclosing that property that you have. 
There are no other options okay. because right now that Kim, Kim, you're done. Okay, thank you. I'm robbing the bank tomorrow. I'm going to share it with you. We're going to tell the West. We're going to say in public, Westside Community Center. Here's what we're thinking about doing, so they can prepare to stop that. No, we're not going to share our options. What could they do to prepare to stop it? Other than follow answers to your plan. Okay. Next. My name is Larry Walker. I am also a part of the uh, committee committee to save the uh, West Side Community Center. Uh, I've uh, been uh, in Asbury Park since uh, 1959, October, and I've seen this town, oh my God, do a, a 360, and uh, I've been on both sides of the law, and I'm 50, I'm 50, I'm 67 years old now, and I want to dedicate the rest of my life trying to give back to this community and doing something for Asbury Park and these children. I have two great grandchildren that I don't want to see ducking bullets in Asbury Park. This community is dedicated. I, I went to their meetings just to find out what was going on in Asbury Park. I went to a lot of meetings around Asbury Park and listened to what people were saying and what was going on because I, I wasn't here for a while. So when I found out what was going on, this group that want to do something for those kids out there that are running around right now, they're gonna have the whole summer to be involved in whatever illegal activity they wanna be involved in, and they don't have a place to go like the community center. That community center over there, we used to have dances in there, we used to have a dance contest, singing contest, we used to have parties, picnic, mystery rides to parks, swimming, it's just every, I mean, this is what those kids need instead of running around with bags of drugs and, 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 and guns. We can go down those streets and talk to those kids as a community center and get some feedback and talk to their parents. I don't think that um, you're doing a bad job for us to uh, rebuild in Asbury Park. I think Asbury Park is, is, is growing like crazy, but there's a thorn here on the West Side community. And we are present, available, and willing to volunteer our time to go over there, talk to these kids. We have people in, in, in line right now to counsel uh, grieving parents from gunshots, from, from their kids being killed. We have counseling set up for alcoholism, drug use, uh, showing people how to fill out job applications. The um, parole reentry program already have a list of jobs on their table. And I saw, I saw uh, a few people take a few of those jobs and, 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 and get hired, coming right out of prison. It's a good program if we can take those same applications which they agreed to give me. I pass them out of churches and everywhere around here to try to help these kids. We are willing and we are here and available. Can you please help us uh, do this? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Motion to close. Second. Great. Uh, good evening. Ernest Gignoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park, New Jersey. I'm uh, arriving back from the city. I'm a little bit late. But I find it interesting the uh, allowance of certain people to go over time to make uh, accusations about people that aren't here. Uh, that's probably why I don't come and a lot of other people don't come here because this is the forum that we have. Uh, I want to make some brief statements. I'm blocked from communicating with police, fire, the city, everyone on the council. I have never emailed anyone personally, only City of Asbury Park emails. Through no due process, the city manager has decided to intercept and block all my emails. He sent me an email saying he didn't. I came in and spoke with the IT person in front of him. I sent him an email and he says it's blocked. So this reminds me of when we had the thing with the sign on the lamp pole where the city manager stated 
there was an application by the deputy mayor and it went to the city power and lay that they have the approval, et cetera. We went to work, we offered everything, there was no document. Further, the city council proceeds to put out letters making accusations of people that are sending lawful and peaceful emails. Again, I have never sent an email to anyone's personal email address. I would never. I have never been to dinner with any official or anyone official in Asbury Park. For them and the legal counsel to make statements that I'm sending criminal emails with pictures of child endangerment, uh, fighting, drug things, uh, dangerous stuff, is beyond my comprehension. There's no injunction, there's no due process, there's no notice, no nothing. So it involves the city council. The last thing is the Santander. The Santander, I have owned and lived there since 2007, August. That building is the most dangerous building, and it's not the only thing that I own, that I think I've ever lived in. And in addition, the city oversight, which the state gives this city, because it's a local enforcement city, is, is, is absent. We're living with lead contamination, asbestos, rats, mosquitoes, falling ceilings, roof, a roof leak, water going into junction boxes, etc., etc. Now, what are we offered? A management company that used to be two city officials that operate out of a home at 1118 Fifth <coughs> Avenue calling themselves a corporation, registered with the Chamber of Commerce, and it's a house. And all our records that we need are being kept in that house. You didn't finish yours. Okay, thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. We have executive session minutes of March 14, 2018, workshop minutes of March 14, 2018, and regular session minutes of March 14, 2018. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Consent agenda? Resolution 2018-125, Resolution Approving the Special Event Applications. Resolution 2018-126, Resolution Authorizing a Refund Due to Subsequent Payment Erroneously Made by Redeemed Lean Block, by Redeemed Lean, Block 2704, Lot 22, 1006 Bond Street, and Block 4302, Lot 1.202, 1700 Web Street, Unit 2B. Resolution 2018-127, Resolution Accepting Receipt of Hazardous Discharge Site Remediation Fund, HDSRF Grant. And lastly, 2018-139, Resolution Approving the Continuation of the Bid Threshold with Appointment of a Qualified Purchasing Agent. Would anybody like any of those resolutions remove off the consent agenda? Hearing none, can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to individual resolutions. Resolution 2018-128, resolution approving payment of bills. Councilmember Chapman abstains from PO 18-00239. Can I have a motion to approve the bills, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2018-129, resolution appointing alternate city prosecutor for 2018. Have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-130, authorizing the extension of approvals for food truck, Move the it. food truck court. Can I have a motion, please? Mm -hmm. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-131, authorizing extension of Transport a liquid sludge through May 27, 2019. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. 
Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-132 authorizing TNM to prepare pre-initial design and permitting for the lifeguard station. Can I have a motion please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-133 resolution authorizing the purchase of personnel protection gear for the fire department. Can I have a motion please? Move it. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-134. Resolution authorizing the purchase of an ambulance for the fire department. Can I have a motion please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-135, resolution authorizing the purchase of radio equipment for fire SUV. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-136, resolution to permit BRS to conduct soil borings and vertical profiles in a public right-of-way on Main Street and Asbury Avenue as part of the remedial investigation activities. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-137 is a recommendation of the administration to table this. Motion to table. Move it. Second. Second. Why, why don't you... If, Combine why, them? No, why don't you read what we're tabling so the public Amendments knows. to the Asbury Lanes Project on Block 4104, Lot 7, 8, and 9, 209 4th Avenue, and recommendation and referral to the Asbury Park Planning Board. Thank you. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-138, interim use of Block 4105, Lot 1 for mobile exp exposition, space for recommendation and referral to the Asbury Park Planning Board. This was also recommended Motion to the be table. table. Second. <laughs> Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. <coughs> On to ordinances, introduction, 2018-15, adoption of an amendment to the waterfront redevelopment. Can I have a motion to table, please? Motion to table. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2018-15. 16, authorizing lease agreement for fire equipment storage at 801 Main Street. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Yeah. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? No. <coughs> Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for April 25th, 2018. Ordinance 2018-17, Ordinance Amending Chapter 5, Beach and Boardwalk and Beachfront Regulations. Can I have a motion to introduce, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? <coughs> yes. We're on introducing the beachfront. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for April 25th, 2018. Ordinance 2018-18, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park amending traffic and parking regulations, Chapter 7. Have a motion to introduce, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? No. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for April 25th, 2018. 
Ordinance 2018-19, an ordinance establishing new restrictions related to prohibited parking during certain hours on 3rd Avenue and amending and supplementing Section 7-14 entitled Parking Prohibited During Certain Hours on Certain Streets of Chapter 7, Traffic of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey, accordingly. Have a motion to introduce, please. Move, Move it. it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for April 25th, 2018. Ordinance 2018-20, amendments number one to the ordinance of the City of Asbury Park and the County of Monmouth, New Jersey, providing for the special assessment of the cost of certain waterfront, stormwater, roadway, street state, utility, and other infrastructure improvements portions of the prime renewal area, the boardwalk area within the Asbury Park waterfront redevelopment and establishment of a mechanism for payment of the cost thereof. This was also Place recommended to the table. table. Move it. Have a second. 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 Council Member Chapman. Yes. Council Member Clayton. Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Well, if, if I could just indicate that all the matters that were tabled tonight deal with uh, issues involving the waterfront and the reason that councils tabled them is that the matters are still being reviewed and that they were not ready for formal action at tonight's meeting. They will be brought forward at a future meeting of the council. Second reading, public hearing, ordinance 2018-10, ordinance establishing salaries to certain employees within the city <coughs> of Asbury Park, Monmouth County. Have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please. Move, Move it. it. Second. Second. Seeing no public, motion to close. Move it. Second. Have a motion to adopt ordinance 2018-10, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2018-11, an ordinance establishing salaries for certain employees within the city of Asbury Park, Monmouth County, New Jersey. Can I have a motion open to the public, please? Move it. Second. Second. Seeing no public comment, can I have a motion to close? Move it. Second. Second. Motion to approve, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2018-12, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 4, General Licensing, Section 25, Licensing of Towing of Businesses, Subsection 25.10, Towing and Storage Fees, and Changes of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please? Move it. Move it. Second. Seeing no public, motion <coughs> to close. Motion to close. Second. I have a motion to approve this ordinance, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2018-13, bond ordinance providing for various improvements to Deal Lake Drive, buy-in in the city of Asbury Park and the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey, appropriating $1,035,000, therefore including a grant from the New Jersey Department of Transportation in the amount of $429,595 and authorizing the issuance of $605,405 bonds or notes in the city to finance the cost of the part thereof. I have a motion to open this to the public, please. Move it. Second. Seeing no public comment, can I have a motion to close, please? Motion Move it. to close. Second. Motion to adopt Ordinance 2018-13. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. yes. Hearing no other business, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? Move it. Second. All in favor? Yes. All opposed? Not one. Okay.